in the last few years, the foundation sort of began as a vehicle to provide scholarships. And that was kind of the focus. And that role has expanded in recent years to do a lot more arts programming and cultural programming. We've brought Ailey here. We've, um, in February, we had Step Africa here in Delaware. Deaf U Tommy was here in July. Those are all programs that we brought to the community. And we do that because we see a need. Hey everybody, this is Mike and you're watching Real Black Podcast. And if you like movies, especially black movies, then you're gonna enjoy this next, uh, this very special uh, edition of the Real Black Podcast. Because with us we have from the Diamond State Black Film Festival, which runs September 15th through 17th, 2022, Mr. Kevin Richardson. Welcome to the show, sir. Mike, thank you so much for having me. It's it's my pleasure and it's my it's my honor, it's my duty because I have a film screening in this film festival, a movie that I've done with Charles Woods uh, called From Slavery to Freedom, A Real to Real Perspective. It will screen on the opening night uh, at 6 p.m., which is Thursday, September uh, 15th. 15th. Yes, sir. And it's also going to screen on Saturday at 2 p.m. So, I mean, I have, I, you know, this is this is great publicity for me as well. So. <laughs> well, it's a fantastic film that um, takes you back and, and really takes a good look at the experiences of how African Americans, Black folks, have been portrayed um, through time in cinema and really talks to the importance of that and the long lasting impact that has because long after we're dead, many of these things will, will be around. I mean, just think about the effect that something like Birth of a Nation had on shifting the culture um, at that time and, and changing perspectives and changing the narrative uh, for what the greater community thought. So films are powerful and your film does an excellent job. Thank you, I appreciate that. So that's my, he's, he's giving me a shout out. So, so <laughs> From Slavery to Freedom is a film that Charles Woods and I have done. It's only gonna be in festivals and if you're a Patreon subscriber, you have access to a link. But, um, you know, the Diamond State Black Film Festival's mission is to highlight works created by and featuring people of color additionally hopes to inspire the next generation of filmmakers and showcase career opportunities in the film industry through a series of workshops, panels, discussions, and master classes. So, um, you know, what, what can you say about the festival that runs September 15th through 17th? I can say we have 24 fantastic films, shorts, documentaries, narratives that I can't think showcase the diversity of the black community. You will be able to laugh, you will be able to cry. There will be times that you walk out of the theater um, really thinking. Uh, we, this is, this is an initiative that was sort of born in the pandemic. It is being organized by the Gamma Theta Lambda Education Foundation, which is um, the charitable arm of the Wilmington, Delaware chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha. So our foundation in the midst of the pandemic and zoom calls and all of that had this wonderful idea and um, the good thing about the pandemic is it gave us a little time to lay the foundation and do the research so that in january as things looked like they were about to open up we decided to pull the trigger this is our very first festival it will not be the last and um we think it's an important piece for delaware um with yes. that yeah you know, speak, to, speak to that in terms of uh, there's no other black film festival in the state of delaware not i think there are a few smaller ones i think there's part of rehoboth has okay. something but nothing to the scale that we're doing at three days again feature length films as well as shorts we have films from filmmakers around the country that have won awards at major festivals around the country. Most of the films that are being premiered here are premieres for Delaware. So they've never been shown at a theater in Delaware. Right. Um, but what makes it so significant for Delaware is oftentimes 
you know, we're kind of in the shadow of Philadelphia. We're about two hours from Baltimore, two hours from D.C. So we're in the midst of these major markets. But at the same time, there's a group of people who may not be able to travel to those cities to see these kinds of works that may on, be on display and be viewed there. So um, that's been a mission of the foundation is to make sure and ensure that we do sort of culturally re relevant programming. And this, this is going to be at the Penn Cinemas uh, theaters. It will be at the Penn Cinema Theater at the Riverfront. Um, that will be the base for all the screenings, our closing awards and um, sort of party to let people let their hair down and uh, enjoy themselves will be Saturday night. And that will be at the Delaware Contemporary, which is uh, the museum down on the riverfront. So we wanted to, to also be able to showcase the city uh, because we have, again, we receive such such um, great films from people from California to Nevada to Texas to New York, DC, uh, Baltimore, Chicago. Um, you know, again, we've we've got really dynamic films that yeah. I think. Well, let's let's jump into uh, you know for those who want to check out the full schedule of all twenty four films, they can go to diamondstatebff.com. But if you if you could just highlight a few that you know recommendations, I'd love it. Well, along with yours, which we've already discussed, one of the interesting films that are also screening the opening night is Once a Hornet, Always a Hornet, which is produced by Delaware State University students, which is the uh, historically black college and university in Delaware, also my alma mater, so I may be a little biased. But this film was actually um, it won an Emmy. Uh, for these students, and they actually won a major grant to help them do future productions. And I, I'm not positive, but I think this may be the first time that this has been shown sort of on a big screen. Right. And so that makes that really special and part of really the initiative. Um, you know, one of the unfortunate things, we had a middle school and high school category along with the college category this year. Uh, we didn't receive any um, submissions this year, and, and part of our goal going forward is to try and increase that number because we know there are talented young people who are making films, and uh, we have a plan for that as well we can get into later. But uh, Once a Hornet, Always a Hornet, what it is is it looks at uh, Coach Rod Milstead, who is a Dell State alum, the current head football coach, and a former uh, Super Bowl champion. Well, I guess you're always a Super Bowl champion once you're a Super Bowl champion. And he's coming back to coach at his alma mater and talking about the university, its importance to him, the football program. And it's they did a phenomenal job for amazing young people. Mm. Um, well, so yeah, Woodstock of House? Woodstock of House, for anyone who is a house head, who loves house music, this uh, film focuses on the chosen few DJs who are a, co a collaborative of DJs out of Chicago. If you've uh, listened to Beyonce's remixes, one of them, Terry Hunter, is one of the Terry Hunter remix. He is a member of the chosen few DJs. But what this film does is look at, the D look at those DJs and use um, them to kind of look at the, the history of house music from its evolution with the death of disco to the birth of house and how it has grown and cultivated um, just the international following. Every year they do, on the 4th of July, they do a, basically a big block party. Well, it's beyond a block party at this point. They draw 50,000 people in a park on the 4th of July in Chicago from around the world and there's never been an incident. So when you think about when you hear Chicago and you hear what's on the news and how it's portrayed, this also shows you another side of that community that, you know, these people are peacefully coming together. Right. And it's it's kind of cool. I don't know if people know Wilmington at all, but this this film, the theater is a block away from the waterfront. So there's dining and all kinds of stuff. You don't have to just eat all the popcorn and stuff that's in the theater. You can 
plan a day and come down and go to uh, the uh, the other places that are along the waterfront, uh, assuming it's a nice day. And it's close to downtown, which also has some amazing, amazing eateries and history as well. Um, right. Women seems a, a special place that a lot of people don't know about. So that's the other part of this. We hope to expose all the greatness that is Delaware to a wider community. Now, Woman on the Outside is very interesting. It is a film about a young woman in Philadelphia who um, had family members that were incarcerated. And because of that, if anyone knows Pennsylvania, if you're in Philadelphia, most of the prisons are hundreds of miles away or at least hours away from Philadelphia without real access um, by mass transit. So because of that situation, she created a transit service that took families up so that they could stay connected with their family members in prison. But what's special about this film is it talks about her as a young woman um, in her mid twenties, sort of taking over the, the role of raising her nephew. Her brother is in jail, her father is in jail. And it talks, it looks at them as both they re-enter society um, and her family comes together. So it gives you a real honest look at, at how incarceration of a person can truly affect a family altogether. Um, it's, it's a dynamic, dynamic story. We're talking with Kevin Richardson, who is one of the directors of the Diamond State Black Film Festival, which takes place at the Penn Cinemas at the Waterfront in Wilmington, Delaware, uh, on Saturday or Friday, I'm sorry, September 15th through 17th. And uh, I'm part of the festival. I'll be screening on opening night as well as Saturday afternoon, our film From Slavery to Freedom. So there's also panels and workshops. Yes, we wanted this to, we understood that many of the filmmakers along with seeing other films, um, might want some fun stuff to do. So we have three different panels. We have a panel uh, that is sponsored by Capital One, which is one of our sponsors that talks about small business lending and finance and credit because most of your independent filmmakers, which this is what we're showing, you know, the, we're not, these are not Marvel movies. Um, they don't have hundred million dollar budgets. These are people putting things together through grants and their own money because these are passion projects for them. So what this hopefully will do is help them understand better ways to manage that process and, and um, manage money and be able to do, do more projects. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, second, um, the second item is called the business of film and really looks at the economic impact that the film industry has in many communities around the country. Uh, Delaware does not have a film office. Well, it sort of has a film office, but it's looking to strengthen that. And part of that effort is to also, um, there's been an effort to bring tax credits to Delaware that would help draw businesses in to make money, um, to make films. And by doing that, you're gonna be able to fill up hotels, fill restaurants to do catering, uh, you know, electricians and union work for building sets and all the electrics work that goes with that. Uh, and so, you know, there's a reason that when you're watching films and you see the little peach at the end, um, it has become a major economic engine for Georgia. It's not just promoting Georgia, it is promoting Georgia to filmmakers and the goal is to hopefully, at least not for us, because it's not our thing, but the people behind pushing this tax incentive is to have more films made here and realize that economic benefit. I love it. Um, so this is a great opportunity to network and meet other f people interested in the trade um, that, are, that live in, in this Northeastern element. And um, I don't know, you know, is, is there anything else that, that we need to cover? I mean, what, what are you most looking forward to besides the films? Well, let me not leave and it out- be, And it being over. 
<laughs> well, let me not leave out the final final uh, workshop, which is screenwriting and pitching right. um, your project. And that is being led by Eric Dickens, who is a Delaware State University alumnus. You may be finding a common theme here. <laughs> But he is a award-winning producer and writer and has had films that he sold to TV One and is currently in production right now with the second film. So he understands, and he's fairly young, he understands the industry and sort of understanding opportunities and being able to present your idea to fit the holes in the market that are there and and helping to understand where the opportunities are. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, I think that is, you say, what are we looking forward to? We're looking forward to really meeting all these people who are behind the film, meeting all the people who are interested in film and showing them a good time, both local, local folks who are coming out to the theater as well as people from around the country who will be in Delaware for the very first time. Fantastic. And those workshops take place on Friday afternoon from 2 to 5 p.m. So the full schedule um, and descriptions of all the films that are on the festival can be found at diamondstatebff.com. Well, thank, thank you, Kevin, for taking the time to hang out with us on the Real Black Podcast. And I will definitely see you there next week, uh, September 15th through well, I, it depends on when you're watching this, quite frankly. It could be tomorrow or it could have already passed. That's that's the that's the cool thing about recording this. But um, you know, for those who if you miss this, if you miss the festival, how can you be a part of next year's festival? I guess is another if you way. miss this year, stay tuned to Diamond State BFF dot com because at some point shortly we will be opening it up for next year's um rounds. We're gonna take a little time to sort of review the good and the amazing of this year and potentially expand some of the options and opportunities that we have. I love it. I love it. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me be a part of this year's festival. And um, I can't wait to meet you and, and the rest of the team. So it is well deserved and we can't make, wait to meet you in person and uh, really, again, we look so forward and we really want people to come out and enjoy these films. There's just the slate of films um, it is really amazing. And everyone who's seen it, I've had the, the privilege of seeing every film. Um, we had different people judging the films from different walks of life um, in, in the various categories. And with that, everyone walked away saying, wow, this is, your first festival, if the quality of film that I saw in my category, I can only imagine, I want to see the other categories. So again, um, please come out, please support. This is a, a wonderful opportunity to, um, again, laugh, think and cry. So have right. a great day. Thanks.